Procrastination is the enemy. Unfortunately. Very, very unfortunately. But I can't allow procrastination to win. I got stuff I gotta do. Including putting this hood on. Is it just me? Or are there not enough hours in the day? It seems like every day, the list just keeps getting longer. You do one thing, ah, oh, I got mud on my hand. You do one thing, but then two things are added on top of that. So theoretically, you take one step forward and two steps back. And that's no good, because then you step out of the shot, nobody understands what's going on. Who agrees that there is not enough time in the day though? <laughs> I love that thing. Well, I took care of the cardboard. Four bikes is very fun. If you consider this a bike. If not, then three bikes is fun. The only problem is once you want to work on one of them, you got to move the others, which is very unfortunate. You know, it'd be very nice if I had a big a larger facility, but I don't. That'd be fly. Very fly. Now there's another event coming up. A hair scramble. Jake the Toilet Snake and Seth are going. I want to go. The weather is getting, the weather is getting crappier. So we have to take advantage of this ride while we can, while we can actually do it. Because soon there's going to be snow and then you're not really going to be able to get the dirt bike out. Well, actually the snow probably won't stop me. Or Jake or Seth. But one thing's for sure, before we even start working on stuff, I want to work on one of the bikes, either the Kawasaki or the Honda. I need to clean up my mess, get a nice open spot, so that I'm not banging into everything, and I actually have some room to work. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely cannot stand to work in a dirty environment. I guess that's not the proper adjective. Messy environment. I understand I have a messy environment. Just I wish, I wish I didn't have as a messy environment as I do. I, I can dream. We all can dream and maybe one day we'll succeed. Just not right now, we gotta work on a bike. I think I wanna go with a Honda for this hair scramble because Jake says there's gonna be a lot of motocross kind of jumps and it would be nice to have the extra power or bah! to get over the hills and the jumps. Now I get it, I don't have a two stroke my Honda doesn't sound like that, it more sounds like brat brat. But you guys get it. So I agree with Jake on that. So I think I'm gonna work on the Honda. I know that I haven't given the Kawasaki much attention. But there's a reason for that. I just made a bigger mess. The 450 has power. The 250 doesn't have as much power. It's not that I dislike the Kawasaki. It's just I prefer the Honda. If I'm gonna get bucked off the back, I'd rather get bucked off the back by four, 450 cc's and not 250 cc's. For example, it's like driving a gas truck and then a diesel truck and then trying to go back to the gas truck. Come on, man. The diesel throws me back in the seat. I can feel some actual power. Let me go back to that thing. I like driving that. You know what I'm saying? I hope I'm explaining this well enough. Curse you BMW parts getting in my way. No, actually, I hope you guys work very well. These intro wipers don't look that bad. I'd greatly appreciate it if you guys work very well, but for now, you gotta get the hell out of my way. As a lot of you guys know and can remember, I didn't make it to the last hair scramble. I prepared my bike the night before, and then I woke up the next morning at about six o'clock and I felt like total crap. This time I'm going to be optimistic. I'm gonna try my best to be, well, healthy. But this time I have a little bit more time to work on the bike before the hair scramble actually begins. This time I'm actually gonna work on the bike a little bit more before the event. It's been a while, but I did lube up the chain. I did tighten the chain. A lot of people always question the way I tighten my chain for some reason. I understand on most bikes, you're not supposed to have it tight when, when it's sitting there. 
But this bike is designed differently. Usually what happens is you make this loose and then once you sit on it, it tightens up. Well, not this bike. It actually loosens up when you put pressure on it. So you actually have to have this chain tight when there's no load on it. Once there's load on it, it loosens up. And when I made this kickstand, I made it just an inch too tall. There we go. Actually, I made it perfectly. I just don't know how to use it sometimes. Because I'm perfect, right? We're all perfect. I still have not added coolant to it. Front brakes are good. Back brakes are good. Wheel bearings. Front one's good. There are a couple loose back spokes. We're going to have to tighten these spokes up. But a couple other things I want to do is clean the air filter, possibly tear the carburetor apart, completely rebuild it, check out the valves, basically make this thing a one kick wonder. Because on hair scrambles, I just tighten down all my spokes. The back ones needed it for sure. I didn't film it because my battery goes dead on this camera. I need to get a backup one. I gotta run this camera battery the same way I run my power tools. If I'm jamming out to the radio. Oh, if you need some personal one on one. Ah, commercials. Well, Dalton, just buy the battery. I will. Back off. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I will. Gotta start by removing the seat. And then the plastics. It only makes sense to take the gas tank off next. Now I want to check just about everything on this bike before this race. The reason being is A, I want the bike to perform well, and B, I want the bike to start well. I want to tune this thing so nice that it starts first kick every time, and I know how to start it. The reason for that is because, well, it would be much easier, and you wouldn't be wearing yourself out before you actually ride by kicking the thing a hundred times, which it doesn't. It only takes usually three to five kicks. But at the race, it's a dead start. And what that means is your bike is off, you have to kick it, and then you have to go as fast as you can. Now the electric starters, or should I say the bikes that have electric start, they have a huge advantage. All they have to do, pull the clutch in, hit their electric start button, and the second that that bike fires, they can drop that clutch and go. I'm like a caveman in that instance. I'm sitting at that starting line like this. Okay, I got my hand on my clutch, depending if I'm on a hill or not, hand on a brake or hand on the accelerator. I'm gonna kick, and hopefully it starts first kick, and then I'll do the same thing, drop the clutch, go. But this thing, this kickstart thing, that takes a lot of time yeah, and energy. See, Jake has electric start, but unfortunately for him, his electric start isn't working so he can't use it at the race. I did, however, tell him to check out the fuse on it, if it has a fuse, because it went from working to completely not working. And that sounds like a fuse to me. Anyways, let's take this gas tank off. I could have avoiding unbolting that pet cock, that's what that's called, by taking the line off in front of the pet cock but I want to remove the whole gas tank and I don't want gas spilling everywhere. So by unbolting that, I have a shutoff. Makes sense, right? This is a nice, beautiful, open space. I love it. I really, really love it. Yes, I know I have to order a new air filter. I'll have to do that after this. I just like the badass look it had, or has. When 
when you gotta take off your muffler or unbolt the bracket to get to your carburetor. Where's my Craftsman wrench? This one is terrible. I'm really tearing this bike down to pieces. <laughs> 